Ashtanga inspired comment and practice. Now, this particular class is available to all levels of practitioners. So, I have here with me a few tools that you may consider as options as we move through the practice today. However, if you do not have a block, a strap, or a bolster, that's okay too. There's many variations available to all of us to move through the practice and uh, have fun with it. So the most important thing we can do together is just to move, to breathe, and have a good time. So to begin the practice today, we're gonna do some standing sequence, eventually make our way down to the mat for a couple of seated postures, and then work on a mild inversion and take a, and take a moment of rest. So to begin, let's come to the top of the mat. So as we are beginning in a standing position, we wanna find comfort in our stance. So we might, for us, and depend on who we are, we might bring the base of the toes together and now for separation of the heels. Or you might decide that taking your feet hip distance apart feels the most grounding today, feels most comfortable. We'll allow the arms to just gently come up to the side body and then we're going to take a moment to either settle our base, straight ahead, lower into the ground, or maybe we close our eyes whenever feels best. So this particular position kind of calling a call for attention to the shin of my stomach, we can breathe. So for, for us, it's almost an opportunity to bring our focus inwards or we prepare for the body and our mind to move through the practice. So just taking a moment here, see how we feel, check in with our breath, allowing the feet to find some planting onto the mat nice and supported, bringing the base of the toes and the heels. Our knees are at a micro bend to avoid any hyperextension of the stem. We're going to start to draw our awareness towards the lower belly. So as we begin to breathe in, we'll draw the lower belly in, ultimately creating a subtle lift in the chest, and the exhale allows the shoulders to gently settle down the back, reaching the top of the head towards the ceiling and easy. Let's breathe. And then when you're ready, you can either blink your eyes open, lift your gaze. And then we're going to move into Surya Namaskar A or Sun Salutation A. So from here, you can keep the feet right where they're at in a nice comfortable stance where you can bring the feet together. Let's begin by taking the arms next to the side body and then on an inhale, take your arms up towards the ceiling. Now as we exhale, we're going to take our hands on the hips. Now this is the first sun salutation, so just bend those knees if you need to, fingertips to the mat. Now inhale, take the hands just above the knees. As we exhale, we're going to take our legs back. Now here we have a couple of options for plank. We can lower to our knees, allowing the shoulders to shift slightly over the wrist, or we can just curl the toes under, draw our lower belly in, and stay in a high plank. I'm going to go ahead and choose to lower to my knees, and then from here, exhale, lower your, yourself all the way to your back. And then from here, we're going to work on some strengthening of our back. So we're just going to gently lift our chest, kind of come into a baby cobra with the shoulder blades squeezing together, breathing. And then lower down. Let's press back into a neutral tabletop with either our hands and knees, and then curl the toes under, press yourselves back into your first downward facing dog. So being that it is the first down dog, we might find ourselves a little stiff, a little tight. So deep bend in those knees to encourage the belly and the ribs to come a little closer to the thighs. You can bicycle those knee or legs. In other words, take one heel down. Maybe in this case, we got the right heel down. And then we switch, bring the left heel down. And allow your focus or your drishti to be where it's comfortable for your eyes. That might be between your ankles, maybe between your knees, or towards the belly button. So the emphasis here is try to engage the muscles alongside of our body so that we're not sinking too far back, but we're also allowing some nice stability in the shoulders. 
Then we're going to take a look at the top of the mat. You're going to gently and carefully walk those feet as many steps as it takes to bring your hands, your feet close to your hands. Inhale, lengthen, hands below the knees. Exhale, we fold, knees can stay bent. And as we inhale, we're going to come all the way up. Exhale, the hands to your heart. So we're going to do two more, just like this, or you can decide that maybe instead of a modified plank, you go into a full plank, you have that option as well. So whether the feet are together or the distance apart, we're going to take our arms up. And as we exhale again, the action of this screws them into our hands, bend the knees if you need to. Then we're going to inhale, take the hands just below the knee. Then hands on the mat, take your legs back, lower into the knees, or keeping a nice side plank, lower all the way to belly again. And then from here, we're going to kind of encourage a little bit more strengthening in our back with a little bit of a baby cobra. Now, your baby cobra is always available to you. However, if you want to press up into upward facing dog, the hands are going to come flat and firmly lift the chest and the thighs to the mat into your upward facing dog. And then carefully press back into a neutral tabletop and downward facing dog. So again, checking in with yourselves, seeing if you need a little bit more movement in those legs, breathing, and at the same time, just kind of not passing any judgment on how we feel today. Just letting the practice work for how we feel. And then we're going to gently look at the top of our mat and then walk our feet up towards the hands. Once you're there, place your hands below the knees. Gently straighten the spine and gaze straight ahead. And then we're going to fold forward if you need to. The knees can be bent. And then on the inhale, we're going to come all the way up. Exhale the hands to your heart. So we're going to do one more just like that. And then we're going to proceed on with our sitting on with our feet. So. Again, comfortable stance on the feet, taking the arms up, and then hanging from the hips, bending the knees if you need to, hands to the mat. Hands below the knees on an inhale. Bring your hands or fingertips back and take your legs back. Again, finding the plank of your choice. You always can drop the knees or you can even take it out of the equation completely and just knee this on your belly. Now from here, Baby cobra options or upward facing dog. And then press back into neutral tabletop, downward facing dog. Take a moment to find your focus. That might be the ankle space, the space between the knees or towards, towards the belly button. Don't force it to look that way. Just let it be a natural gaze of the eyes and breathe. Gazing at the top of the mat, start to walk your feet up towards the hands. Hands below the knees if you'd like, lengthen to look straight ahead. When you fold forward, the knees can bend if you need them to. And then in your hands. Exhale the hands to your heart. Okay, so now we're going to work on swinging up a star beam. Sun Salutation Beam has a lot more positions. So it's a very energetic vinyasa count. So we're going to move through the first one, and then the second one to give you an option if you want to stick with the variation of what works best for you today. So because it starts in standing, you want to place your feet comfortably distance or together, depending on how we feel. I'm going to go ahead and keep mine about a distance apart. So we're going to start with arms right to the side body, just like we did in sun salutation A. But from here, and reminding ourselves that we're breathing through the movements. So you might not hear me say tell you to breathe, just continue your breath as your body will allow. We're going to bend our knees, allow those hips to drop, and at the same time, the heels start to take the weight and bring our arms towards what we call Utkatasana. 
Now, if the palms cannot come together, that is perfectly okay. And then from here, we're going to keep the knees bent, bring your hands to the mat or below our knees and pull forward. Then we're going to inhale to look up, whether the hands are below the knees or on the mat. And then we're going to take our legs back. So this part might be familiar. This is just like the plank. So here, I'm going to take an opportunity to lower to my knees and then lower all the way down. And we're going to press ourselves up. I go into a baby cobra, a little bit more extended spine cobra, or even into an upward facing dog. Your choice. And again, for up dog, we want to clear the thighs off the mat. And then lower right on back down to the cobra. Kind of waking up the spine here. And then we're going to find that neutral tabletop, press back into downward facing dog. Now for here, we're going to make a transition into Virabha Bhadrasana A, or Warrior One position. So take your left foot and turn the heel towards the center of your mat. Then you bring your right leg forward. And then from here, we're going to inhale into Warrior One. So for now, we're going to just stay here and embrace the stretch that this posture brings. Our hand position or placement works best for what feels good to you. So that might be right at the heart, that might be towards the ceiling, or maybe the palms come together. So that right foot is grounded, we've got the knee tracking over the ankle, the outer left foot is nice and strong. Just breathing. When you're ready, bring your hands to the mat. You can always lower that left leg. Find yourself in either this plank or this plank and lower all the way back down find an upward facing dog and then a downward facing dog now as another option we can always drop our knees i apologize sometimes these poses don't allow us the attire to work with us you can bring your left leg forward and come into this warrior one as well this variation. I'm just going to bring my hands to the mat, throw the left toes or right toes under, turn that right foot out, and come into warrior one. So in Ashtanga, we move through this sequence pretty uh, quickly, but we're varying our practice today and just are inspired by the Ashtanga practice. So we're going to take a moment to just embrace the openness that these postures provide us. And then when you're ready, hands to the mat, you can always drop that right knee down, take the left leg to join that leg, and then lower through your choice of plank all the way down. Upward facing dog or baby cobra, your choice. And then we're gonna press the palms, curl the toes under, downward facing dog. Here we are again, check with yourself, making sure that we're connecting with the breath. Breathing, finding our focal point. Since we are in this inversion, our head kind of dangles a little. We see our feet, we see our knees, we see the space between those locations. And maybe there's something there that catches our eyes as we breathe. And then we look at the top of the mat. And we're going to start to walk our feet up towards our hands. And then you can inhale, lengthen hands below the knees or fingertips on the mat. As we exhale, we're going to fold forward. Now bend your knees, allow those heels to become nice and heavy. Inhale into your chair or Uttapasana. And then exhale, come back to standing. There's a lot going on there. So as a reminder, I'll go ahead and put one on my shirt. You can move through this next uh, Surya Namaskar B with the variation we kind of demonstrated in the first one, omitting some of those um, vinyasa postures and just kind of working with what feels good to your body. So again, feet comfortably spaced for your body, hands next to the body. A nice bend in the knees, the hips shift back, our heels become heavy. Here we are, Uttasana. Exhale, fold. So we're going to move quickly through this one. You can always bring your hands just below the knees. Take your legs back. Now, once you're in your plank, you can drop your knees, 
shoulders over wrist, or you can come to the high plank with that lower belly drawn in to help protect the back. And then we're going to lower all the way to our belly. Baby cobra or upward facing dog. Neutral tabletop, downward facing dog. So the left foot, we pivot the heel towards the center of the mat. We bring the right leg forward. As another option, you can always drop that left knee, bring the leg up, then curl the toes under, position the foot, find your warrior one. Take a breath in, exhale, drop the knee if you need to, find your choice of plank, and lower down, upward facing, or baby cobra upward facing, downward facing. So again, you can drop the right knee. You can decide to just keep with that right heel. Bring the, lead, the left leg forward. Make some adjustments here. Warrior one. And then bring the hands to the mat. Drop the right knee. Take your legs back. Find your plank. Lower down. Baby cobra. Upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog, and here we are. Checking inventory, checking in with the breath, noting how we feel. Options to you at any time throughout the practice. If you need to sit down, please do. If you need to just stand, please do. Do whatever you need to do and join us when you're ready. And then we gaze our hand as we start to walk the feet up towards the hands. The spine lengthens, spine lengthens. Exhale to fold. Now we're going to bend our knees. Those heels become heavy. We're going to inhale into our chair. And we're going to come back to standing. Okay, so that has provided us some nice openness and some stretching and a little bit of heart rate uh, pick me up as well. So we're gonna move into a stretch known as Bionda Shasana. This is a great way to kind of help create some space in the wrist after bringing and lowering ourselves down through those sudden salutations. So to do this posture, we're gonna take our feet, since we are in the standing sequence, sit bone distance or hip bone distance, a matter of comfort and stability for you. Then our hands are gonna find their way to the hips. And from here, let's take a moment to bend our knees and then we're gonna really sit in a chair. And then we find that the chair is going to push us out. And so our bellies and our ribs start to work their way to the tops of our thighs. And then our hands are going to find our toes. So we're going to slide the index finger and middle finger directly into the toes. And the thumb is going to come right on top or wrap around your choice. Now, what we don't want to do is create spinal flexion. We're way up here. We're trying to get here. So the intent here is to kind of connect the belly and ribs to the tops of our thighs and allow us to find some grounding and opposing forces between the toes and the fingers. So once we're here, if it's available to you, we're going to bring the elbows out. We're going to press the toes down as we lift up to engage the shoulders, and then maybe we just lower the head. And we stay here in this nice deep bend, benefiting from the space in our wrist and just working with that. Three. Now from here, we're going to inhale to look towards the top of our mat, remove the fingers, exhale the hands to the hips, and inhale, come up. All right. We're going to spend a lot of time facing the top of our mat. So now we're going to move into Bautista de Konasana, which is the intense triangle, excuse me, extended triangle posture. So we're going to set our right leg back, and then we're going to face wherever that may be for you, the direction of the road. So we're going to take our right toes out, and to do that, we're going to come onto the heel, point the toes, and then settle the toes down. That left foot is going to slightly turn in the toes, and so the heel will compensate by going slightly out to the left. From that action alone, you may notice that your left hip wants to go towards the top of the mat, or the back of the mat, depending on where you're positioned. We're going to place our left hand 
onto the hip and just encourage it to gently find its center, find your balance. And that's where we start. So the intent of the Pizza Triconasana is to create as much length in our torso versus just dropping down to find the leg. So we're gonna take our left hand and our right hand about shoulder height. And then as we exhale, we're gonna draw the right femur in. Notice the tilt action that happens here when we tuck in that right hip, and then we reach as far as we can across the room until we can't reach anymore. And then our right hand will land on the top of the shin, maybe below or closer. This left hand is gonna to come to the left shoulder and gently press the left shoulder up and extend the arm. Now, if any of your body parts feel any discomfort, especially the shoulders, that left hand can stay right on your hip. I'm gonna bring mine up. And because this is a posture where a lot of hyperextension can happen, where that right knee wants to push back, encourage a micro bend there. And then gaze down straight ahead or maybe up at your left hand and just breathe. Now we're gonna gently bring ourselves up. You can always rest your hands on your hips. We're gonna reverse our feet. So we're gonna turn, come up onto the heels, turn the left toes out, and turn the right toes in slightly. The right hand is gonna kind of help encourage our right hip to kind of slightly come back. And then as we exhale, we're gonna hinge and tilt as we reach, 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 and then place the hand where that may be for you. And I'm gonna to catch the toe, but that is not a requirement. Right hand up to the shoulder first, Maybe it decides it's going to hang out here on your hip. Otherwise, you can bring that right hand up and breathe. And then if you're looking any uh, other direction other than down, take your gaze down. Carefully come up. Relax your arms and bring your feet to the front. Okay. We're going to move right on into Upita Partial Konasana, which is our extended side angle. So from here, we're going to take our right leg back, and we're going to start to kind of pivot as if we're going into a wide stance. Then we're going to take our right toes, come up onto the heels, turn your right toes to the back of your back, and just like we did in triangle, we're going to slightly turn in those left toes and allow the left heel to kind of work its way slightly back. Then we're going to take our left hand, slightly encouraging the hip, just come just a little bit closer to in line with the right. We're going to bend our right knee. So we want to take a moment here to decide, do I need to take my stance a little wider? Because I might feel like I'm going a little too far forward, or I may just not feel like I've got the space I need to really open up in the hips. So just like triangle or trikonasana, the hands come up, shoulder height. And then even though we have a bent knee, we're still going to create a hinge and reach. Now. Forearm is like a kickstand. Just helps to prop us up slightly so we don't drop into that shoulder. This left hand is gonna wrap and swing itself towards your right ear. Now this is a great posture to introduce the block as well. You may not have it on this side, but you can always try it on the other side to go a little deeper in the posture. You would place the block to the outer right leg and place your palm on that block. Stay here for a few breaths. And then we're going to carefully kind of come up into a warrior two position to straighten the arm. You can relax the arms. We're going to start to pivot the feet into the opposite direction. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a block to show you what we can do here. That block can come to the outer edge of your right foot. If you want to take your uh, posture a little deeper, you can even start to lower the block or completely remove it. But again, the integrity of the posture is nice, strong legs, and to avoid our spine from going into a flex, flex state, in other words, when we're rounding into the toes. So, knee over ankle on the left side, arms are coming up, shoulder height, and just like the previous side, we want to create a little bit of a hinge as we reach, and then maybe that left hand stays on the left thigh. Maybe you decide, oh, that look would be a great way to see how, how much strength I have in my legs, pressing here, maybe going even lower on the block, turning the right shoulder in into our side. Engaging with those fingertips, grounding through the feet, gazing down straight ahead, or maybe you decide to go a little bit up to 
for your right fingers. And then carefully, looking down, bring yourself up, straighten that leg, relax your arms, carefully turn the toes in, and then come up to the top of your back. Great job, guys. Now, we're going to work a wide-legged forward fold known as Vasarita Padokanasana, which is kind of wide-legged extended forward fold. This is also a great uh, posture to introduce some of your tools. So, I'm going to grab the block, and then I'm going to take a nice wide stance. And I'm going to place that block just in front of me. Now, the intent here is to work with the hips and the strength of our legs. A lot of times when there's a tendency to fold, we find our spines kind of rounding to compensate where we might experience the lack of mobility or tightness. So, with the feet being the base and the support of the posture, we can keep the edges of the feet parallel to our mat, or we can slightly turn the toes in. And just play with both of those variations to see what works best for you. What we want to avoid is for you to take your feet really wide, just so you can get closer to the back. We don't want to do that. We want to start to work through the legs. So, for me, it feels best to just have the outer edges of my feet parallel to the mat. So with all, if most wide, or most forward folds in yoga, especially working from the hips, we wanna create the hinge and we work from the hips. So the hands are resting just on top of the hip bone. You might feel if you kind of dig in a little, get a little bit of that, what we call the iliac press. That's where we want our hands to rest. And that's also what we wanna encourage our fingertips to help us uh, bring ourselves closer to the mat. So when you're ready, on your exhale, let those thumbs kind of press your hips forward. And then for me, that block is just right where I need it to be. It's going to help keep me in alignment, keep me in position, and help to encourage the length and activation of my legs. So this is an option for, for students that do have a block. If you do not have a block, your hands can rest just below the knees and get the exact same benefit. Otherwise, if you've got some open hamstrings and open hips, maybe those palms work their way down to the mat. And if they do, very carefully, start to walk your hands in a little and fold forward. Maybe walk in a little and fold forward. Walk in a little and fold forward. And stay here for a few breaths. Carefully with the grounding of the feet, we're going to inhale to look straight ahead. We're going to bring our hands to the hips and carefully come up. You can step the feet together and come to the top of the mat. Excellent job, guys. All right. So now we're going to work with the posture known as extended, extended hand to big toe pose, Utita Hasta Parangushtasana, or extended hand to big toe posture. This one has a lot of components that come together to help keep us moving through the posture. So there's a lot of different variations available to students. If you'd like, you can introduce a strap around the base of your toes. Keep the strap maybe halfway folded and bringing the strap to the base of the toes. And this isn't a, a, a tool for grabbing for dear life. You're gonna take the index finger in this case of your right hand to help bring the leg in and then out then the strap will become the extension of your hand. The other alternatives, of course, are just to hold the knee with your hand. So because we're going to be working from the hips, at the same time balancing, we want to kind of find that stability first in our feet. And then the feet can be spaced hip distance, closer together, under the sits bones, whether it's closer to you. The left hand is going to go to the hip, and then we're going to bring the right knee in. Now, some students love to kind of start here and see how they feel. And then if you want to catch the toes, you're more than welcome to catch the toes and extend your leg. So but for this side, I think I'm going to go ahead and just hold the knee, keep my hips from kind of shifting too much from side to side while we're breathing. You also can extend your leg with the strap. And if it's, it's easier for you, you can move to a wall for support. Take your leg out to the right. Again, we'll work from the hip. Rotation. Excellent rotation. Bring the leg back. Now, if you've got your knee, see if you can bring your knee a little closer towards your chest. If you've got your leg, you know, or extend your leg, see if you can kind of pinch from the hip and pull forward. And then this is the fun part. 
We're going to extend our right leg out. This leg is going to draw in and we're going to pull into it. Bring both hands to the hips for five, four, three, two, and one. That's a definite quad topper. <laughs> so we got to do the other side, right? To stay balanced. So again, we find the grounding of the feet. And then you can always start right down the hip. Bring your left knee in, or for those of you using the strap, you're going to hold the strap and get the finger between you, bring the knee in, and then maybe you sit here or you extend the leg out. So I'm going to hold my knee, and then today maybe I'll grab the toe on this side, and I'm going to work from the hip to bring the leg and foot out in front and breathe. And then I'm going to lower my leg because I've got the extended leg. So you've got your knee, bring your leg out to the side, and breathe. And also, for those of you that have a strap or you've got your toe, press your toe or the base of foot into the strap or your uh, finger and then try to pull back. Bring it back. And then for the fun, and on this side, We'll pretend to hold into the leg and you let go and you breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, <laughs> we made it. Good job, everybody. So now we've got our going down to the mat for a half seated posture to create some kind of breathing, open awareness to our breath, and then we look into one forward fold and then find our center to a mild inversion. So in the Ashtanga primary series, once we complete the standing postures, we move into a sun salutation to get to the next posture. So we're going to use the benefit of the sun salutation to get us to the ground. So before we do that, though, if there's any props or anything around you, feel free to take this opportunity to move those things out of the way and then come to the top of your mat, whether the feet are together, base of the toes, natural separation of the heels, or maybe the feet are hip or sit bone distance apart, whatever feels most grounding and best to you. And just take a moment. We did a lot of work there in those standing postures between our extensions and, and twists and those types of things that just kind of bring the postures of the standing sequence together. And then from here, we're going to take our arms up and then we're going to hinge from the hips and lengthen, bend your knees if you have to, come to the mat. As we inhale, we lengthen, and again, the hands can come just below the knees. We're going to take our legs back. Find your choice of plank, whether that's a full plank or we lower to our knees, let's lower all the way to our belly. Baby cobra or upward facing dog. And then exhale, downward facing dog. So we don't hang out here too long. We're going to lower to our knees. We're going to make a little bit of wardrobe adjustment and then we're going to have a seat. All right. So we're going to move into a posture known as Dandasana. Dandasana is our half-seated stack posture. Now, this posture can speak volumes for a lot of people, too. If you sit down and you find yourself kind of hanging back, where the hips are kind of dragging you back, then we can introduce a bolster or a pillow or even a block under our hips to create a little bit of lift and also give us the advantage of the forward fold. So, I'm just going to grab this block here since it's closest to me. And I'm going to set it here just to quickly demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to have a seat. You can always use a pillow or two blankets stacked on top of each other or if you happen to have a bolster. And here, we find that the spine has an opportunity to create its, its uh, extension. We're just kind of folding back. We've elevated the hips. So, just some other alternatives to the practice. So, if you're deciding to sit on anything that's perfectly okay, we're going to start to create some activation. This isn't a pose where we just kind of hang out for five breaths or whatnot and, and call it a day. We're going to start creating some activation and extension here. So, if it's available to you, you can bring your feet as close together as possible with the toes kind of facing towards you. It's going to allow the fingertips to find their way next to our hips and maybe encourage us to slightly press forward and then lower shoulder blades down. You can stay on the fingertips, or if you can bring your palms flat, perfectly okay. And we're breathing from the ribs. We tend to breathe a lot from the chest. We want to keep our chest still. So as we breathe out and breathe in, let that belly expand. 
and breathe. And then slowly lower your chin to the knot on the collarbone, or to the knot to the joint hammock. And then carefully just kind of relax. Try not to dunk yourself. A lot of times that happens. It just creates this lift and this activation. And then when it's over, oh, we're done. So that kind of activation we created is for a reason. So we fold forward. We're not starting from this kind of um, relaxed position to reach forward. So if we find our dindakana again, you notice that we're already creating some hinge in our hips. So for the next posture, posture panasana, we're just going to stay right where we're at, and then maybe we bend our knees. Because this posture kind of requires our bellies to rest closer to the tops of our thighs. Maybe this would be a great way for us to just kind of start here. Now, this is also a good posture to introduce a strap around the base of your toes and work the straps as extension of your hands. So let's just say we don't have a strap or a rope or a jump rope or anything like that. Or maybe you just decide you don't want to use one. We can start here. And then carefully come onto the heels. And then with our hands just underneath our thighs, we're gonna start to walk the heels out. But at the same time, we wanna keep the connection we created with our bellies and our um, ribs onto the legs. So let's just say, for example, you know what? I'm gonna to start to lose that connection right here. And then maybe this is where we stay. Spine is extended. We still have some activation in our legs. And we're breathing. Otherwise, we kind of start to come forward. Maybe we find the edges of our feet or our toes, and we're here. And release. And we're going to work our way up, and then we're going to work our way onto our back. So very carefully, come onto the elbows, lower down. And for, day, for today's modified inversion, we're going to go into Udva Dhanurasana or Upward Facing Bow, but we're going to use the bridge variation as our inversion for today. Still has the same impact as the full upward press with the extension of the spine and creating some length in our psoas muscle. So to begin, we're going to do this posture, allowing the feet to come as close to our bums as possible. Don't worry if you're going to touch, that's not the intent here. And then the feet are perfectly planted. Not so perfect, they're just grounded and firm. We don't want to be on our toes, we don't want to be on the outer edges of our feet. We want to emphasize the weight more so on the inner edges of our feet where the base of our toes are. That keeps our knees from going out to the side. So from here, we're going to keep our palms and turn them up. Gently walk a shoulder blade in to the right, roll to the right to tuck the left in, and maybe do it one more time on each side. So for some of us, this might create some kind of activation already in the spine where our lower back has lifted off the mat, we're on the sacrum, the feet are planted, the inner edges of the feet, and the back of our head is now resting. And we can stay right here, it's perfectly okay. We're still seeing some spinal extension in the mild back bend. Otherwise, if you want to pop up, you're going to press the feet into the mat, lift up those hips, and we stay right here. And we just breathe. And then lower down. Let the shoulders kind of come out. And then for a moment, just kind of let everything settle. Maybe we inch a wipe the knees a little, if that feels comfortable to you. Or if you'd like, you can breathe one chest or one knee in, one the other. Maybe we just kind of circle around, releasing our lower back. And allow the feet to come back down. And then we're going to lengthen out the legs to each corner of the mat. Take a moment here to take your thumbs to the base of your skull 
and use the fingers to cradle the back of your head. Gently lift your head up and allow the chin to slightly tilt as you lower the head down and push the ponytail in the way. Just kind of get it to be what I want. And then lower the head next to the side body. Allow your feet to sway out to the side. And let's settle into our Shavasana resting posture. Breathe. Take as much time as you need here, a couple minutes, four minutes, 10 minutes, whatever feels good to you. And whenever you are ready, you can come out of your rest in any way that's comfortable for you. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.